today on JD Cars, we're gonna be cleaning up these gross corroded front and rear brake rotors and calipers, and we'll be painting the calipers in a gold finish. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Good to be back with some more F30 content. I've spent the past like two months working on the Wrangler over here. Aside from brand new headlights, brand new coil springs, custom color matched fender flares here. I actually tore it down to the frame, left the body on, but tore it down to the frame and gave it a full painting and undercoating. This thing's posted for sale. By the time you're seeing this video, probably won't have it anymore. But enough about the Jeep, let's focus on the Beamer over here. So as you guys know, if you've been following the TikTok and Instagram, you know I stripped off the camo decal right here as well as all of the red accents in the front. I'm also gonna be pulling the front V-brace, which is the last red accent aside from some on the rear bumper. I'm gonna be pulling the front V-brace and I'm actually gonna paint it and color match it to the calipers. So, should look pretty sweet with some gold in there. It'll match up with our ISC suspension decal up front. And it should just be a cleaner look overall. That's really the point of today's video. The rotors and calipers, they have rust on them. They just don't look good, especially the rears. Oh gosh, such an eyesore. So I didn't get paint for the rotors. I'm kind of kicking myself. I wish I got some black or silver paint just in case we can't get all the rust off, but we're gonna try, we're gonna try our best. I picked up a few different wire wheels, aside from my set that I have here at home. The scaler might be a little aggressive for this job, but I have a number of wire wheels, but these aren't really the type that you wanna use on a brake caliper, they're pretty aggressive. The type that have the, the short wire just sticking out sideways like this, they're pretty aggressive, and I, I bet you they would dig into those calipers. So. Something a little bit less aggressive is the type with the wires oriented vertically instead of horizontally. It's a longer wire and just moving sideways instead of directly head on. It doesn't really mar up the surface as much. So I got this cup wire brush, it's like six bucks. This should be good for removing the bulk of material. And I got this little guy here, also like six bucks. This should get into the tighter spaces and it also has a drill bit attachment instead of the angle grinder attachment. So this will be a little bit lower RPM, just for the tight spaces we can't really get to with this. But this is gonna be a pretty rapid video. I'm not gonna go into a ton of depth about painting. I'm by no means a paint professional, but you don't have to be to do this job. But also, we are like 36 hours, no, not 36 hours, like 48 hours away from having to have this car complete for the Keys Auto Show 2021. So it's crunch time right now. I'm gonna be cranking through this, trying to get it done as soon as we can. Just wanna get these rotors and calipers looking a bit better for the show. Side note, check out these sick new GTS OLED taillights. Anyways, time to pull off our wheels. We'll get grinding and uh, see what we can take off with those wire wheels. I'm now about to loosen up and remove our caliper bolts. We have 18 millimeter caliper bolts in the front. There's two, I'll show you those in just a second. We'll also wanna disconnect our brake pad wear sensor. There's only one on each side. They're held in by these little rubber rubber casings. You just pop them out like that. Give yourself a little bit more slack to work with. Of course, don't let it dangle by the brake line. We'll wanna secure these in the air with brake hooks or bungees. Now for the caliper bolts, we have two of them on each caliper, of course. One down here and another one up at the top there. Same situation in the front. The fronts are a little bit easier to access. There they are. 18 millimeter up front, 16 millimeter in the rear. As you can see, I've already loosened these ones up. Pull the bolts and pop off our caliper. All right, our rear and front calipers are hanging down. They're supported with bungees right now. I have the rear calipers split in two. These guide pins literally just slide out. No fasteners. Kind of to break this down, make uh, cleaning it up a little bit easier. The rear is definitely gonna be a challenge to do on the car. The front, you can pop the brake line out of a little clip. Pull this tab, pull this out. Um, it's oriented like this. You pull it upwards and that will release your brake line. Give you a lot more slack to work with. These aren't terrible to access. They're a little bit more difficult to get the pads out. In order to do so, you should First, leave the caliper on the car, and using a small punch, stick it in those two holes, and you'll punch out these two little pins here. That holds in this little clip, and that clip 
holds in your two brake pads. So it's as easy as that to strip down your front calipers. I've just sat under the car for like half an hour contemplating pulling off the calipers to do this job off of the car. But for the sake of time and for the sake of those of you watching at home who don't want to pull off your brakes because you don't want to have to bleed the brake system, I want to make this video as easy as possible for everyone at home and think I'm going to go for it. We are going to mask off the underside of the car so overspray doesn't get onto any parts we don't want painted. But without any further ado, I'm going to get going with the wire wheels and we'll see how much we can clean these up. If it's too much of a pain to do this on the car, I may pull them off, but I'm not ready to give up yet. We're going to try to do it on the car, do this as quickly and easily as possible. All right, after about 40 minutes, I would say, this is the result. You can see our old one over there is absolutely gross. This looks a hell of a lot better, and I'm honestly, I know this sounds disappointing, but I'm honestly considering just leaving them like this after cleaning them because I'm in such a time crunch here. I don't know, should I leave them silver? Should I still paint them? But uh, yeah, no. This cup brush right here did a fantastic job. I got probably 90, 95% of the debris off, at least the target areas that I'm trying to paint. Then I went back with the drill and this little fine brush. I really don't think I'm gonna do the inside of them. I know the inside is just gonna get caked in this stuff anyways. As I said, these brushes do kind of dig into the metal a little here. With some paint, it'll look a lot better, I think. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I got four more calipers to do. Got my work cut out for me and it's above 60% humidity outside. We're only supposed to prime and paint these in up to 60% humidity. We're at like 76 right now. Not good. Might have to close the garage doors and run some heaters in here to kind of dry the place out. And believe me, running heaters is the last thing you want to be doing when it's already 80 degrees out. All right, all four rotors are nicely cleaned up. Got everything masked off. Starting the rear here, you can see, put some trash bags up and use some masking tape just to mask some things off. Try to prevent overspray from getting in places we don't want it. These little 13 gallon trash bags work great for masking things off. But at this point, it's time to hit our calipers with some acetone, clean them off really nicely, and then we're gonna hit them with primer. All right, everything is wiped down. In acetone, I use this duple color premium cleaner series acetone. Um, pretty basic stuff, it was like 10 bucks for this can of it, but it works phenomenally. Like this masking tape and even the, where is it? There it is. Even the cheaper like white masking tape, it's sticking to this stuff like bonkers. Like the masking went really well. And I do want to mention that quickly. You want to mask off your bleeder valves as well as your pistons. Also masked off the brake line. Same deal in the rear here. Mask off our guide pin holes right there, our bleeder valve, as well as the brake line itself there. And uh, we're ready to spray some primer. All right, so I'm sorry, but under the stress of doing 87 different things at once and trying to get everything ready for the show, we just got a new carbon lip in. Have to strip this side skirt because it has a tiny little hole right back there and it's gonna drive me nuts at the show. So I have to rewrap that, which also means rewrapping these guys while they're off. Got Sam coming over to help me with that. But we got everything painted up as you can see here, including the calipers, which I think look absolutely gorgeous. Look at that finish. I, I mean, I'm not trying to have myself up, but I can hardly believe that came out of a spray can. Like that, looks phenomenal. I was really happy with the Duplicolor and the VHT products that we used. Just to give you a rundown of everything I used, we of course used the Duplicolor acetone here. It cleans things off really well. Then I primed things up with the Duplicolor engine enamel primer with ceramic. So it has ceramics in the primer that absorb heat, give it a higher uh, heat tolerance. As you can see, up to 500 degrees, plenty for our brake calipers. And I think Duplicolor and VHT are like owned by the same company or something. Let's see, this comes from Cleveland, Ohio. This also comes from Cleveland. All right. And design, the cap design and the spray nozzle is the same on them. 
Um, and they also spray very similarly, which is something I want to talk about. These spray very finely and very lightly. So I did, I think, three coats of primer, three coats of base, and then three coats of clear coat. Uh, I'll talk about the clear coat in just a second, but they go on very lightly. And don't be discouraged if on your first coat, you're not really seeing that much coverage. It's important to lay down a nice light dusting that helps the top coats grab onto the surface. So just do a light dusting initially, wait about 10 minutes, come back, give it another coat, rinse and repeat. And before you know it, you'll have your calipers painted. It was really all in the prep work that we did using that wire wheel, acetone, and then masking everything off properly. But doing the painting really wasn't that difficult at all. I had actually ordered some metal sandpaper to sand down the calipers and get them really nice and smooth, but it didn't come until after I had painted them. So that kind of goes to show how good this paint is. It just lays down so smooth. It's really impressive. It took three coats to get the full color out of the gold, especially going down on a gray primer. The first coat, I was like, oh no, this does not look good. Second coat, okay, this is looking better. Third coat, bam, gold. Super rich, nice metallic in it. You can actually see the metallic settling in the paint when you spray it, which is kind of cool. So after I did my color coat with the gold, I went inside, had lunch, gave it about 45 minutes, I would say. And then I hit it with this rust -Oleum High Heat Gloss Clear Coat. And uh, this is a very universal product, but it had a high enough heat rating that I felt comfortable using it. That's just what I could get my hands on in the time frame. I'm sure the Duke Color or the VHT works well. Give you a quick look at the rear calipers as well. Didn't go quite as hard on these with the prep work. And you can kind of see that it's a little bit more of a orange peely type finish, but plenty good for me. We're really only gonna see this end of the brake caliper right here, so I'm not too concerned about it. And of course, the other part of the rear brake caliper looking good, and this sucker looks awesome. Cannot wait to have that back in the front end here. At this point, VHD says we're supposed to put these in an oven at 200 degrees for, I believe, 20 minutes. Um, that's not gonna happen, obviously. But we can sort of bring them up to temperature A with a heat gun or B by driving the car and braking pretty aggressively to bring those up to temperature. I'll probably do a combination of both. I'll hit them with the heat gun pretty thoroughly tonight, let them sit and dry thoroughly overnight. And I'll let you guys know tomorrow when we go to put the calipers back on how well they hold up with handling them and reinstalling them if anything really scuffs up or if it's a durable finish. All right, so the next day we have the brakes fully reinstalled and I have to say, they look pretty killer. So as you can see, they have a very nice glossy finish to them. Really not much to complain about at all. Even with our masking around the bleeder, I was able to get back behind the bleeder screw, able to get in all these crevices. And I think the biggest thing to remember is you don't have to go super, super crazy on the back side um, or even on this side right here. Just try to get this face, you know, as nice as possible. That's what we're gonna be seeing. Aside from that, the back and the side here, it's all aluminum, so if you don't get full coverage, especially like I did on the inside, you really can't see it from this angle, but during the painting process, you guys saw I did not go crazy about trying to get paint in here, because it's just gonna get caked in brake dust anyways, um, and it's all aluminum, so it's not gonna rust if I don't cover it, right? So I went with the most time effective method here, I'm happy to say we definitely did not need to remove the calipers from the car, even the rear ones, which didn't drop down nearly as far as the front. The rears came out just fine as well. 
The only thing I wish I did was I wish I ordered a new spring to get that looking a little bit better, but I'm fine with that. Maybe I'll hit it with a wire brush just to clean it up a little bit. But here are the rears. They're looking pretty sweet as well. I'm gonna get all four wheels reinstalled. We have a new carbon front lip to install along with a few other little bits. I did tell you guys I painted the V-strut the same color. Here she is. This came out phenomenal as well. Can't wait to have all these gold matching accents. Let's get these wheels and other little bits on and I'll show it to you when it's on the ground. All right, what's going on, folks? We are here in the crib at school, currently grinding out this caliper video for tomorrow. It's Thursday. Always try to get the videos done before Friday for you guys. Unfortunately, because I was being such a tweaker and I was in such a rush trying to pack in way too much work on the F30 before the keys show, which by the way, we got the car done. It was a phenomenal show. Be sure to check out that video if you've yet to do so. But I didn't have time to go in and get lots of detailed shots of the calipers, especially with the wheels back on and the car back down on the ground. I'm sorry. I do have pictures on the Instagram if you want to see some on the ground with wheels on. It looks awesome and on the topic of making that journey down to new jersey for the keys auto show and like to state no brake interference whatsoever the brakes worked phenomenally the entire time and b i know appearance it's a very close second priority after brakes working uh, but yeah no appearance they held up really well i don't know if it was just because i did a long trip afterwards or if they didn't really need the baking but the finish has held up extremely well to this day and i never did any sort of baking um, i did hit them with the heat gun and drove the car quite a bit afterwards which may have helped with curing but overall really happy with how this paint and clear coat has held up especially considering how quickly we applied it this was you know maybe a day i spent less than a day i spent cleaning and painting and drying and it all worked out beautifully so if you're looking to change up the color of your brake calipers spice things up a bit on your car or even just change your v-brace color i definitely recommend picking up some paint you can always paint it again later strip the paint off or wrap it a different color but anyways i don't want to drag this out i'm going to try to finish this video up before my final exam in about an hour which I have been studying very diligently for. <laughs> I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please go leave a like down below. As always, any comments or questions down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on JD Cars.